Hi guys and welcome to Studio Wildlife. In this video I'm going to show you how Amber painted this dog. Um, this piece was a commission um, and I'm going to talk you through what her process was. So she starts with the background using some white, some burnt umber, some yellow ochre. And she starts really simply by just blocking in some basic colours using the brown, the yellow and the white. After that layer is dry, she builds up a second layer on top, again using the brown, the yellow and the white paint. Just building those colours up and blending them into each other. Now, a lot of people think that getting a nice soft blended background means putting on lots and lots of water or putting on lots and lots of paint and blending it together when it's still wet. Whereas we've both found that for a nice soft background, the best approach is to do lots and lots of very thin layers and build those colours up on top of each other to get a nice even blend between the colours. And so you can see that's what she's doing here. The reason that we tend to go for a more blurred background when focusing on pet portraits is so that the pet is the focus of that picture. Next, just like me, she moves on to the eyes. The eyes are really simple, she starts by drawing in using a black, black paint and fills the eye with whatever colour she needs to do. For this case it's usually a brown eye for a dog, so she uses a bit of burnt sienna, burnt umber and raw umber for the iris and then some Payne's grey, some black and some white for the actual pupil of the eye. Next she goes on to build around the shape of the eye, just using a small round brush. I think this is a number one or number two round brush. So she builds up both eyes first, because again, just like with wildlife art and with portraits, we both feel that the eye is the most important part of the picture, and to really have life into a painting you need to make sure that you get those eyes right. Okay, so now just using a small filbert brush, she's just building up the colours, building up the shapes around the eye. Okay, so she's alternating between a filbert brush and a small round brush. At this stage, it's more about just blocking in the colours. Okay, so that's what she's doing, she's blocking in the colours with a large brush just to get those basic shapes down, those basic structures and that basic background colour and that base colour that she's going to work on top of later. So All she's doing is using watered down paint and just blending those colours together to get a nice soft base fur coat. And she is working from a reference photo so when you're painting, if you're, especially if you're doing pet portraits or dogs make sure that you're working from a reference photo if you want your painting to look realistic. Try and match that reference photo as closely as possible. So just like with the wildlife and just like with my technique, Amber is working from dark to light. Amber takes a little more care than I do with this blocking stage. I'm a little bit rougher whereas Amber is more careful with her brush strokes and more careful with her colours which is why her pieces tend to look a little bit more realistic than mine. Okay, it's all about choosing the right colours to match your reference photo. By establishing this base coat first, it makes adding the details much easier later on and makes it look much more realistic as you can see the layers underneath. So next, using that small filbert brush, she's just roughly blocking in some fur into the background and blending it into the background and blending it in with the rest of the fur. It's all about just repeating this process over and over and over again. Just carefully 
adding layers of lighter fur over darker fur to give the impression of layers using thick brush first and then using a finer brush for those finer details over the top. You can see that she's varying up the shapes of her strokes. That means they're not all going in one direction, they're wavy, they're curly and they're very random. This variation will add a look of realism to your fur. It's very important that when you're going for realistic looking fur that there's lots of variation with your brush strokes. As she moves on to the details, again, it's much lighter fur or lighter colours over the top of the darker colours. And then sometimes knocking back those lighter colours with some darker fur over the top will give more depth to the painting. It's all about using the detailed brush just to bring in those fine hairs, making sure to follow the direction of the face and study that reference photo very carefully. You don't have to add every single hair, but what you can add is hairs in the right place to make sure that it gives the appearance of lots and lots of detail. So as she builds up the colours of the ears and around the face, you can see that she's not adding every single individual hair. There's a lot of individual hairs, but not every single hair. It's not exactly like a photograph. All she's doing is giving the impression of detail. And that is one of the big key things that separates a great painter from an okay painter. It's knowing when to use detail, when to use hard marks, when to use soft marks, controlling those edges and those shapes and those values so that you're only giving the impression of detail and not painting more than you need to do. And you can see for a painting like this, there's a lot of layers that go into it and a lot of time that goes into it. If you are a pet portrait artist or just a wildlife artist in general, if you're just starting out or wanting to start a career in pet portrait art, um, it's important that you develop your skills in a way that fully represents the art that you're trying to create. So whether you want to go for photorealism or you've got a specific style, it means putting in the practice and establishing who you want to be as a pet portrait artist or a wildlife artist and making sure that your style allows you to capture the subject that you're trying to paint as best as you can do. It doesn't have to be perfectly realistic. You can capture the spirit of an animal. You can capture a likeness without being perfectly photorealistic. So more abstract pieces or realistic pieces work just the same as long as you can capture that life from that animal or whatever it is you're trying to paint. The majority of the colours used for this painting were burnt umber, lamp black, titanium white, raw umber, burnt sienna, yellow ochre and Payne's grey. Okay, so there weren't many colours that go into this. For the browns of the fur, so this dog isn't completely black, it does have a lot of bluey tones and some brown tones. Amber used Payne's Grey for the blue and then glazed over the top of the hairs with the burnt umber to give it a brown tint. If you've watched my other videos, you'll know that glazing is just thin washes of paint watered down with water. 
the thinner you can get it the better so it's almost transparent. When you paint this over the top of painting that's completely dry, please make sure it's completely dry when you're trying a glazing technique, it will change the colour of the paint underneath without losing many of the details. So glazing is really great for colour correcting, adding tints of colour or adding shadows or highlights. So with the detail brush, Amber is just completely just filling in areas of the fur, just adding in those finer details, making sure there's lots of variation in each stroke. To finish off or roundabout finish off, she's adding some darker marks and some lighter marks around the dog, just to darken up those areas that need to be dark and lighted up the areas that need to be light and some more detail around the eyes. It's these final steps, these final bits of detail that really make a difference when you're going for realism or you're going for a realistic painting. And it's all about building those layers and building them up, adding more and more detail with each layer. You could go directly from the white canvas and work section by section, adding all the detail in one go. But we find for paintings like this, where you need a sort of softer looking fur in some areas, it's much better to work in layers and build up that detail as you go. This leaves much softer looking fur and some detailed fur where you need it. Okay, for the final steps, all she's doing is adding the detail to the nose. So for this again, she's just using raw umber, uh, sorry, not raw umber, she's using Payne's Grey, Lamp Black and White. The person that commissioned this wanted the name of the dog, it's called Sam. And then Amber finishes off the painting by signing it, as should you. I hope you found this video helpful, if you did please make sure to give it a like and subscribe to our channel and as always thank you so much for watching, for more wildlife art tips head to studiowildlife.com